So I will just explain a little bit about what is SDR here, okay, and how you can use SDR, which is Singapore Depository Receipt, right, to uh, to buy into Thailand stocks, okay. So the concept of SDR is similar to ADR, okay. ADR means that we have Chinese companies, for example, like Alibaba, uh, like um, uh, some of the EV, you know, NEO, etc. Right? They are listed in the uh, U.S. exchange, U.S. stock exchange, right? And under this ADR, okay. So we have right now Thailand companies, okay, three Thailand companies listed in SET, right? Which is now available for Singapore investors to uh, take a like a uh, to assess into these stocks, huh? Okay, so this will allow the Singapore investors to buy into stocks that are listed in overseas, but you do not need to open an account with the foreign uh, stock exchange, all right, or foreign brokers. You can buy through SGX, okay, through your regular brokers because this um, listed company they are available, uh, you know, uh in SGX via the SDR, okay? So this is the concept of SDR, very similar to ADR, right? So there are a few benefits of uh, looking into SDR, okay? Number one is that apart from global access, cost, simplification, convenience, okay? But if you really look at the logistic, it means that you do not need to open an account elsewhere. Everything all right, would be under your current arrangement. Okay, so if you do have a stockbroker and in that stockbroker you have a portfolio of stocks, um, you don't need to open another new account. Okay, which also means that when you, uh, let's say, get a statement, all right, you don't need to get multiple statements because the uh, SDR would be housed in the CDP, okay, together with your other stocks. So you do get everything at one glance. You don't need to go all over the places. But I think one of the biggest advantage would be no currency loss, okay, because if you take a look at, for example, uh, buying into uh, Thai stocks means that you have to convert the Sing dollar into uh Thai, Thai baht, right? And we know that uh, Thai baht has been falling uh, against the sink. Okay? That means that Thai baht is weakening. So for example, if you had previously changed, let's say, one sing dollar to 20 baht, all right, right now, then one sing dollar would be getting only like uh, uh, 25 baht, right? Okay, but you already, you know, own the baht if you buy into, let's say, the Thai stocks, right? So it means that your your whatever profit right now, you need more but more Thai but to trans to, to change it into Sing dollar. Okay, so with this, a lot of time there will be a lot of currency losses if things aren't managed properly. Now, same thing for example, if people is to buy into let's say the US stocks, so if they change at a bad rate, it, it might eat into their profit. Okay, so these are currency losses which a lot of people didn't take note of. So one of the very important uh, financial consideration of considering SDR is because of this currency loss. You basically get everything and every access in same dollar. All right. Now, there are also uh, benefits such as, for example, there are some markets which are doing very well. There are some industries which we can't as have access to. And if you can use SDR, you can have these markets. You can tap into these markets for another opportunity. Okay, so apart from what has been listed by SGX in terms of the reasons such as, you know, uh, flexibility, transparency, convenience, cost, global access, etc. I think that these are the three main reasons uh, why I would appeal that you look into SDR, okay? That means that as and when there's there's a opportunity to look into SDR because then, you know, it might be another market that you want to explore into, okay? So we are doing this globalization already. Then, yes, we, I think in the future, there should be more offerings via the SDR, okay? Now, how does this SDR work? Uh, first is that you don't really own the stocks, huh? 
but what you what you own is that you um you own uh like a NVDR okay which is a known voting depository receipt okay so this is what you have right uh and the um the the key thing is that okay uh you are still eligible to the dividends all right and that dividends will be already converted to Sing dollar. Okay, that means that you don't need to keep your dividends in Thai baht. Okay, it's already converted to Sing dollar, and the dividend is directly put into your CDP. Okay, although that's one thing is that even though you have the SDR, uh, it's non voting. Okay, but you do own uh, the underlying uh, NVDR. Okay, which is the non voting. Uh, uh, depository uh, receipt okay so uh, this would be the structure that you have but this is not the core of what I'm trying to present here what I'm trying to present here is to introduce to you the three stocks that are listed here in SGX all right under the SDR structure okay one would be the Apple of Thailand uh, the other one is CPO, all right, which is the listed company that's that's uh, running 7-Elevens in uh, uh, Thailand. Not only 7-Elevens, uh, they do have complementary uh, business, right, such as some food business, etc. And the last one is this PTT exploration, uh, which is basically involved in oil uh, harvesting, etc. Okay, so these are the three uh SDR and I want to share in-depth analysis that means in-depth price level okay and I hope that this price levels either you yourselves are involved already vested and it will be useful for you or that um, you would want to you know monitor them and in case there's any opportunity you might be able to use all these price levels okay all right, so the first one is uh, AOT, which is Airport of Thailand. So if you've been to uh, Thailand, Bangkok, for example, you know that there are like two main airports. Huh? Okay, the first one is the one that I do not know how to pronounce. It's too uh, lengthy. Usually I say I don't want to go to the international airport. <laughs> and then the taxi driver would just drive me there. Okay, the other one is uh, mostly for some of the local flights and as well as uh, some of the uh, airlines like uh, the budget airlines, Dongwang Airport. Okay, so these are the two airports that's being uh, run by AOT and you find that there are really many people there in a pub because I just went to Thailand a while ago uh, Bangkok uh, really tons of people passing by okay so they don't only run this airport but they also do up comprehensive of uh, services uh, which uh, includes the uh, ground handling the retail and commercial operations now one thing I realized that when I was at the uh, international airport the Suvana Mi Airport, right? Um, was that the food, the, the food there in the airport, they were really ultra expensive. Even McDonald's is like double the price of Singapore. Okay, so that's my impression of the airport. So the rental must be really very, very high. Okay, because I think because of the air traffic, right? Now, what I have listed here, uh, as the SDR information, that means that if you're interested to participate in the SDR, the code would be TATD, okay? All right, and uh, it is the ratio, that means the SDR with underlying, the ratio is one is to one, all right? The company website is this website here, okay? You can request a copy of this uh, presentation if you want to, you know, get all this information, all right? but what is most important is to really take a look into the technical side that means the price level okay so i presume that some of the other trainers would have already covered the fundamental of these companies all right so today my objective is to cover the price levels because if you look at um buying into something or or, or getting out of a trade okay or investment uh, the charts they are really very helpful because it gives you a broad overview of what's happening okay so what i usually like to do when i look at a chart is to cascade down in terms of analysis that means to look at what is happening at the month then followed by the week and followed by the day okay so i'm just looking right now at the month 
Okay. Now, few things to take note of. Number one is that for AOT, the trend is very nicely up. Okay. What do I mean by the trend, right? When we take a look at the trend, we look into each of the uh, lows. Okay. So these are the lows. All right. And then each of the highs. So these are the highs, right? So these are uh, higher higher lows. That means that each time when the price moves down, all right, it form a higher low. So in this case here, uh, I'm able to conclude from the chart that the price trend of AOT is still very much up. Okay, so that's the first thing, right? But what in but what is important is that in terms of analysis, I also look at the key events. Okay, you remember what happens during 2020, right? And that was uh, COVID. Okay, now during the COVID session, I mean period, right? Um, all the airline stocks, uh, all right, including SIA, for example, they dropped. They were very much affected, right? So we see that. Uh, AOT was originally in this very nice uptrend, okay, but because of COVID drop, okay, so this was the low of COVID, right, and that low of COVID was around the 45, 48, um, uh, you know, uh, price level around here. Now, in this case, uh, if COVID was the worst period for, I mean, worst period in the past 10 years, right, for the airline or air travel related stocks then you can you can conclude right that 48 dollars here around this price i would say really 48 to 50 dollars right it's a very strong support level because once aot seen this and and touch this support level it starts to rebound okay so i repeat right uh, around the 48 level which was the COVID low 48 to 50 level all right this is a very very important support level for aot because if you assume that air travel is to return then i would have to assume that we are not going to see that level of um activities during the, the COVID period. Basically, COVID period has, has no activity, right? It has really very little travel travelers and very little activities. And that's the reason why AOT was being pushed down. So $48 uh, is a very strong level, right? Now, what I did, right, is to also map in, okay? Because generally, this is still an uptrend. So what I did is to map in key levels that you might want to look at and focus at, right? Because generally, yes, Yes, even though a stock fundamentally is good, but there are always swings of up and then swings of down. Okay, swings of up and then swings of down. Right, uh, we know that. Right, and how do people make decision? Okay, even fund managers, because I work with a lot of them, they always refer to some critical. Uh, some historical price levels. Okay, so yes, we need to refer to all these levels when we are looking at price. So what I've listed down would be the first level. Okay, and that's 70. And unfortunately, this level today was breached. Okay, so that's why I say it's a very important price point and 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 also just right, right, that I'm doing this session. So 70 level here, the one that I mark in as a very important support. Okay, so that's the $70. Okay, so that's the $70, right? You, you, you find that um, that's another one more price level here, okay? And that's price level was about $62, okay? How do I get this price level? Basically, what we do is to refer to historical level because previously, before the plunge and uh, during COVID, AOT has been moving in this manner here, okay? Which means that there's a lot of like buying interest at this 62 levels, Okay, 62 levels had a lot of buying interest previously. And during the post-COVID period, when Thailand was starting to open up, yes, there was a bit of a consolidation into the 62 levels here. So I think that if 70 levels cannot hold, then the next level would be 62. And this 62 also converge huh, with this upsloping trend line. So technically, uh, when we have a like horizontal levels that converge with some other technical levels, these we view it as a very, very strong level. Okay, so around 62 would be the second level of support for AOT.
Now, what I did is just to be a little bit more careful because you realize that sometimes price will overshoot a little bit. Okay, that means that instead of stopping nicely at 62, sometimes uh, it, it can and it does overshoot down a little bit like to 60 to 58 to, to uh, 50 something level, right? So I map in another one more key level here, okay? And that key level is around 57. Now, the reason why I mark this 57 is because that if price, okay, doesn't stop around 57, that means that if, let's say, it AOT really, really starts to uh, correct, right? And it doesn't stop at 57. Then to this uptrend, okay, it's posing a very dangerous situation. That means that if price doesn't stop and rebound at 57, then we might not be seeing an uptrend in AOT anymore, okay? We might see a little bit of an extensive correction, all right, before we start uh, to see AOT resuming its upward movement. Okay, so three levels that I've highlighted, one will be 70, uh, the second one will be 62, and uh, the third one will be 57, in any case where there could be just extreme situation. But um, 62 is really a very uh, strong and important levels, okay? I would really be uh, looking at 62 very strongly uh, should price starts to correct, okay? Now, uh, what... I did also as to sort of map in the pattern, okay? That means that currently this is a pattern on assumption because when I did the chart, uh, price hasn't moved up yet. So we can't confirm, right? So at this point, uh, the current chart pattern, okay? Uh, seemingly seems to resemble a cup and a handle. Let me just explain what is a cup and a handle, right? So this is your cup. Okay, and this might, okay, might only, right? Because we haven't seen uh, price moving up yet. We can only confirm the cup and handle pattern if price can move up, okay? So what is the meaning of a cup and handle pattern? It means that um, the stock price was building a base, consolidating. So this was the first consolidation, all right? And then when it comes to the second consolidation, it sort of didn't want to move down a lot more than the previous consolidation. So it's, it's like consolidating here in a like shallow manner, okay? So we call this like a, uh, a building a base, okay? Building a base for what? Building a base to move up higher. But on condition, right? Uh, price must close and trade above, okay? So this neckline, so this is a neckline, right? It must trade above it. Okay, now uh, in this case, yeah, in this case, uh, very important. Uh, first, we have to see 70 level get supported. Okay, because if 70 level doesn't get supported, then it won't be actually going up, isn't it? So if 70 level doesn't get supported, let me just clean this, then uh, potentially we would be having this potential cup and handle pattern with a deeper retracement. That means it might go down to a deeper retracement and still be forming a cup and handle pattern if it can close above the neckline. And how do you, how do we draw the neckline, right? Usually when we have a cup and a handle, we just take that high of the cup and then high of that, another one more high point and connect these two points, right? And we're just waiting for price to go up, okay? So I just want to bring up that uh, even if price does the move to the 62 levels, okay, which is around here, there is still a potential for price to form this huge basing cup and handle pattern. And usually, uh, for a lot of US stocks huh, that can move multiples, that means that two times, three times that of the previous prices, a lot of US stocks prior to that movement, they all or most of them form this cup and handle pattern. That means that they don't correct at the low of the price. Instead, they correct right at the top of the price by building a base. And this building a base means that people are actually slowly accumulating the stocks. Okay, so do pay an attention to see whether this cup and handle can come true. Okay, now what I did is to further cascade, all right, to see whether uh, price can stay above the 70 levels, okay? And what I did was to draw in this Fibonacci levels and um, to 
to, to deduce, okay, this uh, Fibonacci 76.4% is the last support region. And unfortunately, this uh, level was broken today. So let's take a look at the live uh, charts. Huh? Okay, so uh, if you... Uh, uh, go to trading view which is the which is the stock software that i'm using and then key in aot just aot right the first one you should be able to find under set the airports of thailand okay so this is the airports of thailand let me just maximize the chart okay so this is exactly what i what i've uh, drawn just now um this was that Fibonacci retracement. Basically, what I'm trying to do is trying to say that, okay, price was previously supported at this particular retracement. Uh, if it can bounce up, okay, then the 70 level here, the 70 levels can still hold. But it seems that as of today, so this is the day chart here, right? as of today, right, uh, price actually uh, traded lower. So with this, um, as long as price doesn't move above 68, okay, if it continues to stay below 68, then I think that there's a very high chance to move to the next level, which is at 62, the levels that are marked in here, okay. So in this case here, based on the most updated uh, price point, uh, I, would, I, would, I would sort of form an idea that the 70 support level as right now, um, broken okay we should be uh, slowly inching towards the 62 levels all right and of course uh, it has to do with also set that means that under set right um, the index okay the index uh, wasn't doing uh, very well recently okay so this is the set index and it had actually fallen a little bit it's still on its uptrend okay it's still on an uptrend but um, this down was a little bit of a steeper in correction and that does affect uh, the uh, AOT, which is one of the very important uh, component stocks. Huh? Okay, so uh, that's for AOT. Any question here before I moved on to the next uh, stock? Any uh, question that you would want me or any clarification that you want me to highlight in uh, AOT? Oh, you guys are good. Okay, if you do have questions, you can ask me in the chat box. Huh? Don't need to leave it until uh, pigeonhole. Okay, all right. So if no other questions, I would move to the next stocks, which is uh, CPR. Okay, I'm sure that you've been to uh, Bangkok and then almost like every street, every small little corner, there will be a, a, a 7-Eleven, right? And that's where we buy our you know, uh, water and then uh, our our food from there, okay? So uh, this company, which is CPR, runs the chain of uh, 7-Eleven, all right? Uh, what, what is amazing is that I did a bit of a calculation, all right? And in 2022, all right, there were around 13,800 Seven Eleven outlets in Thailand that's operated by CPR. Okay, so thirteen thousand eight hundred. I tried to see how many footballs uh, few that that uh, that uh, that you can occupy, but I'm not too successful in calculating that. But it means that this is a huge number. Okay, so by looking at cpr you are investing in a retail and convenience store operator in thailand that is very very established and i personally do not think that 7-eleven will be gone at all in thailand because every time when i'm in bangkok i the first thing i need to go will be 7-eleven okay now this uh under sdr is under this trading code tcpd okay tcpd again the ratio is one is to one uh, for the SDR and the underlying, and the company website is this one here, as I've listed. Okay, so you can, uh, you know, get a, a copy of the slide to refer to it. Okay, but most important, let's take a look at the long term view. That means the key level of CPR. Okay, now I want to want to say one thing, right? Uh, for these two stocks, uh, AOT and CPR, the price level that you must take note should be COVID low. Okay, why? Why is that so? Because you know that Thailand is very much into tourism. Okay, apart from being an agriculture country, it's also into tourism. 
All right. So during what happened during uh, COVID, yes, indeed, a lot of the businesses were very much affected. Okay, including AOT and of course, you know, as tourists, uh, we do buy quite a lot of things from 7-Eleven. We do form quite a percentage in terms of the uh, sales volume. So yes, I think that even CPO was affected as well. Okay, so when you look into a stock chart, try to relate the price point, that means the high and the low, to that of key events. And then we will put that in to our understanding of the price movement. Okay, so let's talk about from day one when it was listed in 2004, what happened to the price and then what is happening right now. You see from the from this chart here, right, CPO trend has always been up. Okay, that means that in for, for stocks chart that where the trend is down, you know that, okay, the lines will be slanting down. Okay, but not for CPR, right? CPR, if you take a look at the line, that means you try to connect all the price point, right? You know that this is an up. Okay, that means that this is an uptrend, a very important uptrend. Okay, so that's the first observation. The second observation is that whenever you look at the price movement, all right, um, it's, it's doing this climbing stairs. Okay, what is the meaning of climbing stairs? Huh? That means it goes up, it comes down, and it goes up, it comes down, it goes up, it comes down, right? Now, each of the down point was a previous high. Okay, I, I, I demonstrate that to you. Huh? It goes, oops, yeah, let me just do it properly. Okay, it goes up, it comes down, and it goes up, right? It pushed through, it broke through. And then when it comes back down, so this low point here happens to be a previous high. So it's like a staircase, you know, a staircase will go like that, like that, like that, and like that, right? So when it comes down, this previous high becomes that support level. All right, so this is so far what's happening for CPR. Okay, I'm just going to draw that again, right? So we have this price that goes up, down, up, down, and then it goes up and it hover for a while. Finally, it broke, okay, and it reached a high of 90, all right. So, um, I mean, what did it break, right? It break this support level around here, okay, and that's about 52, all right. So, that's the resistance level that it broke, and right now, this resistance, resistance level turned into a support, and this was the lowest price that we've seen during COVID. Okay, that means that just now for AOT, I said that we need to pay attention to the price that is being hit, reached, all right, during COVID. And for AOT, same thing. We need to pay, at, uh, sorry, for CPR, same thing, right? We need to pay attention to this low price here, and that's about 52 as well, 52 to 53, all right? And price indeed, right, hit this same level, okay, around 2022, low of 2022, and it moved up. Okay, so which also means that naturally, we, I have to assume that this price level would be a very, very, very attractive price level. Okay, because um, it was a COVID low, it was a previous high, and this becomes like a tipping point. Okay, that means that if price can still stay supported at 50, 253 levels, all right, this means that the stock is slightly going to resume its uptrend. But of course, that if price breaks below this level here, it is not a good sign anymore. Okay, so the key support level, the critical level that you need to take note of will be the lower gray line that I've illustrated, and that would be the 52 to 53 region. Now, sometimes, right, the price, it does overshoot a little bit. Okay, because due to extreme volatility, due to fear, sometimes it can overshoot to like, let's say around number 50 and then starts to rebound. So do give it a bit of a uh, like buffer. Okay, so take note around the 50 to the 53 levels. Okay, so that will be the first key level that you want to note off. All right. Now, the recent priced action, uh, that means the recent price movement of CPO is really reserving very much, right, like a ranging situation. That means that uh, since after the COVID, so this was the COVID, right, the COVID low, 
Okay, this one was COVID low, right? Okay, and it had been moving in this ranging situation. You see that? It's, it's not really trending, it's ranging. So in a way, right, it's good for if you if you it's good if you want to trade within the range okay that means that what is trade within the range right you buy somewhere near to the low and then you sell somewhere near to the high and this is what we call trading within the range all right so you have fixed range a uh, very nice defined range here for cpr okay so let's talk about the price range in terms of the prices right uh first would be what i pointed out this would be the 52 to the 53 level which i point out here okay so that's the first range now the second range which would be in terms of the support would be around the green zone here so that's the 58 levels and how do i get this uh zone right so that's because it bounced off here once twice the time fourth okay and a thief right and then another one more time here so usually we go via observation and, and this is really very much in terms of what technical analysis is all about right because people do remember prices you remember for example uh if you are doing singapore stocks okay uh how high a dbs ever uh, went to and then you do remember for example every time cpr bounces off 58 it will just bounce up okay so we do remember all these price levels so 58 would be another support level that you want to take note of so it goes like levels by levels okay it cascade so first level support will be 58 Se second level will be around 52 plus minus around there okay all right okay now of course then as i said right uh this stocks is trading in the range so very nice defined range right so the top of the range will be 70 okay so this will be the 70 and how do i get 70 because um, it touched here once and then the second time so that's the 70 and of course the extreme level will be 74 okay so here one time here and then the second time so very clear defined range okay 52 support 58 70 and 74 all right any question here before i move to the live charts okay so let me just go to the live charts okay here we go you can just type cpr okay and that would get you under uh trading under the sct the cpr right and this is it okay so here we go uh what i did right same thing uh, i tried to uh, get you some uh, nearer price levels especially when we are dealing with cascading in terms of time frame okay um and and in in the updated a weekly chart right so this the week hasn't closed yet because this is monday and today it just starts to drop right so last week it was still pretty much supported by the 58 levels okay and what i did was i drew in this fibonacci retracement i wanted to know that whether price can get supported at the 76 region but it sort of like um had a bit of a break below it but it's still okay for cpo it is still supported at this region here okay so still supported at the 58 support region okay but it's just that uh, in terms of uh, price right it's looking a little bit weaker here okay so as i mentioned uh, what we need to do is we need to observe between these two price levels that's the 58 and the 52 plus minus 52 53 levels right plus minus around this region right and when priced um in, in previous day when price touched this key level that's always a critical uh, price action that means that in terms of candlestick right you do see things like it goes red color and then the next candle like uh, yellow color so all these are uh, candlestick pattern so with sgx i do run a candlestick pattern uh, course as well if you know you see you can join right so these are candlestick pattern and what i think is that you should be looking out for candlestick pattern all right that means that reaction right for all these price level all right around here that means that you want to see whether uh, this was this is right now a red color right whether it can turn to become a green color or if price continue to move into the very strong region okay whether there is a rebound here that means that whether price can turn up and whether they are like a uh, red color becomes a green color kind of state okay so uh, this is so far what is happening okay and uh, what i also like to talk about is to turn on the volume 
okay because usually when we look at price movement right we do look at the volume um luckily this time around when price starts to drop right the volume isn't that significantly high so we just have to watch out if price can get supported here that's why i say today is a very good day for me to talk about uh the thai stocks because then a lot i mean at least for CPR, right? It hit into a very nice support level already. It's just whether, um, you know, it will bounce up. Okay. All right. Any question here before I moved on to the last one, which is the uh, PTTEP? Sometimes the name is too long. I just forget about it. Any other question? Okay. Don't have a, let me just move to the next one. Okay, so the next, next, the last one, all right, that's listed under the SDR scheme is PTTEP. Okay, so this is a oil exploration company, all right. It not only have exploration in Thailand, it does have uh, quite a lot of presence in other uh, countries. Okay, I'm not sure whether I've listed uh, the uh, uh, Okay, just let me just get you the. Okay, so it 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 has a quite a um a a, a huge uh operation. So not only in the region of Thailand and near us, but also over the world. Okay, so these are some of the projects, right? That uh, it's involved in. Okay, so they are basically in the production of oil, development and exploration of oil. Okay, so let's take a look into the slides to see what they are doing. All right, so they um, have exploration, drilling, production of oil and gas reserve. And you know that recently the oil has been actually going up. Okay, so when you take a look at the price chart of PTTEP, Ah, that price chart is very different, okay? So let's take a look. But before that, if you are interested to participate in TT, uh, PTTP, then the trading code, right, is TPED, okay? So this is TPED. Same thing, the ratio of SDR to the underlying is 1 is to 1, and then this is the company website. So here we go. This is the um, chart of uh, TPED. Uh, PTTP, okay, uh, is looking different. It's quite different from what you saw for AOT or CPR, okay? Now, a few things to take note of. Yes, for the past uh, 10 years, okay, because um, this is from 2009 all the way to here. It's actually more than 10 years, right? 13 years, right? The stock has been in a flat consolidation. You see that? This is the consolidation, right? And depending on how you look at it, if you were to draw in technically a trend line. So this trend line here, we use it to decide whether there is a trend change or not. Basically, when price breaks above the trend line, there is a suspected trend change. Okay, what do I mean by that? Previously, the trend had been really like going a little bit down, right? But because price broke above it, okay, then uh, this signify a, a change of trend. What kind of trend, right? That means the downtrend no longer valid anymore. Uh, it seems that it is actually moving upwards huh, with the break of the trend line. Sometimes, um, if you have been to my other sessions, I will say that, hey, sometimes, right, the trend line will be broken and then it will unbreak. Okay, that means that is is like a failed breakout. But for TP, P, PTTEP, all right, what it did was it did like a pull back towards the trend line okay pullback means that it tested the trend line that it broke and it got supported and moves up okay so this pullback activity here confirms that the market is observing this trend line okay the market knew about this trend line and they are actually trading around this trend line so that's the most important thing right with this pullback it firms up that the support here at 140 is a valid support. Okay, I repeat these. Huh? Um, a lot of time that we want to know whether price is a good support. Okay, so we want to know uh, whether this support is being supported and we see whether 
price can test to that particular level and rebound from there. And this is what happening to the stocks here. Okay, so it rebounded. And so the 140 as a very strong support level currently. All right. Now, if this support doesn't hold, all right, and price is to drop below 140, what this means would be that the breakout of this down sloping trend line will no longer be valid. And we might see the stock move back into its range trading. Okay, range trading means that previously I mentioned, right, the stock was like that, like that, like that, like that in the range, right? And you might see that it's going to move back into the $80 region. So I hope that 140 can hold. So two key levels here, 140 and 80. All right, now, um, what I've also did is to assume that this 140 is a very strong support and had been broken and that trend line had been broken, right? So if this is the case, um, we will look into the closer uh, current price action, okay? So the current price action, I've identified two levels here. One level would be the red color line here, red color zone here, and the other levels would be the blue color zone here, all right? So these are all the nearer interim price levels okay so with this let's take a look at the moves updated price chart okay so that's p t t e p okay so once you key that in you're gonna get the stock code here and this is it okay so uh, as, I, as as you can see right price that had been really moving very nicely okay along with the the reversal of oil so in a way that uh, PTTP is following the price of oil, okay? Uh, of course, then, because the main business is on, on oil uh, exploration, okay? The key levels here, the, the one that I map out, key levels here, will be about 150, okay? 150 level here, and the key resistance that I map out here will be about 177 to 178. I would really think the 178 is the stronger level. Okay, so few things, huh? Uh, might happen. Number one, if there should be an opportunity, I, I mean, I, I do not know whether there will be an opportunity or not, but if price does get resisted at this resistance here and didn't manage to break upwards, then we might have an opportunity for it to come back down to this support level here. So that's about 150 to 153, okay, plus minus around this level here. Of course, the ideal situation is for it to test back this line here again, all right? That's about 130. So that would be a very, very good support price level, okay? So I'm just going to write down here 130, and then this one is actually about 150. And But if price didn't move down and in fact right after staying on top here and if you can break down above the key resistance levels all right that's about 178 huh? so this 178 is that key resistance level then i think that there is a chance for these stocks finally to escalate okay to move up stronger all right on condition that the final high level here all right which is about 195 will be also broken. That means that it has to break above 195 in order for it to move higher, okay? So, but if you take a look at the whole setting of uh, PTTEP, all right, the whole setting, right, it is staging a very strong uptrend. That means I have to assume that um, the 13th year of consolidation that we saw from PT. Uh, TEP had been broken. So what do I mean by 13 year? Let me just switch that into uh, a, a, a chart here. See that? This was that 13 year of consolidation. It's, it's like, just now when I explain, right? Uh, they're building a base, okay? So uh, this is what I mean by building a base, okay? So did a bit of, bit of a base building here, all right? And finally, it broke out of this base, Okay, and then retested into this level here. Um, some people, all right, might see this whole thing as a big cup, and then this one as a small handle. And if this is the case, this level here, as I mentioned, would be your neckline, and that's about 195. Let me just draw it very nicely, okay? Nice drawing for you. Here would be... Just give me a minute. Okay, here we go. So these might be a big, nice cut. Okay. They had been basing for um, about 14 years already. And maybe a small little cut here. Okay. 
So the key level for this cup and handle pattern, if this is going to be a cup and handle pattern, of course, I said before, right? For cup and handle pattern, we need price to actually break above that. Okay. But if this cup and handle pattern is true, then we are talking about 196, huh? the high level here. Okay. I'll really, really round that to $200. Okay. That means a close of $200 is going to break out of this cup and handle pattern. Okay. And I also want you guys to pay attention to the volume. Okay. Because volume is a very, very important clue to us. Okay. Especially when price is basing and especially when price is basing and then going up. Okay. You see that generally the bunch of volume here, this one, right? Okay. It's generally higher than the previous volume. Okay. That means that uh, while price hasn't been moving uh, much, but at least towards the higher side, right, of price movement. Now, this is the lower side. This one is the higher side. Towards the higher side of the price movement, the volume is actually quite significant, okay, significantly high. So that's a, a quite a substantial participation from people who are interested in this particular stocks. Okay, all right. So if you ask me uh, which stocks among the three it technically, okay, they are, uh, which one compared to the three technically, right? Which one is actually looking better? All right, I would think that uh, this stock here, uh, PTTP, because of the lengthy consolidation and a potential uh, breakout of this lengthy consolidation. All right, okay, good. All right, let me just check whether what I've written in my slides, just give me a minute. Ah, okay. So, um, as of uh, here, okay, the earnings, uh, the earning is um, it's coming up. Okay, so do take note on the earnings. All right, uh, and they do have recently quite a nice, uh, quite a ni quite some p uh news that came out, and 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 it shows that the company is actually having quite a lot of activities. So do take note on the earnings, okay, which is actually coming out very soon. Let me just see whether my system show the date or not. Just give me a minute on this one here. Okay, the earnings uh, will be on 26th of October. Okay, for uh, PTTEP. All right, I come to the end of the session.